All right, my friends, there's a storm coming, and it's coming from France. And it's the company called Storm Audio. And what we have today is pretty amazing. We have their 32-channel Atmos DTS-X Oro 3D processor, and we're going to be doing an unboxing. Hello my friends, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. Today we're reviewing and unboxing something that's very special. This is a atypical product. This is not a mass produced product. It's not the typical receiver or Japanese you know, processor that we reviewed in the past. This is from a French company called Storm Audio. And I've actually been talking to these guys for a couple of years now. Um, before I started the Audioholics Smart Home, I was looking for something really sophisticated in terms of AV processors. I was wanting something that had incredible base management flexibility. And in order to get what I wanted in the base management in a product, we're looking at products that are anywhere in the $20,000 range, price range and up. And this is no exception. This is the Storm Audio ISP MK2. And the retail on the way this is configured for my review unit is $22,400. Now that's not chump change. That's the price of an entry level car. But the stuff that this processor is claiming to do is something that I'm very interested in when I'm building the new AudioHawk Smart Home Theater system using these RBH speakers back here. We're gonna do something that is quite exquisite in how to configure and what really stand, makes this product stand apart from any of the other processors on the market, and there's some great processors on the market. You've got the Trinovs, you've got Audio Control, you've got the JBL Synthesis One. There's so many great products on the market these days, upscale processors. But this guy has the ability to do all active crossovers on my speakers. And I'm going to be looking at possibly bypassing the Mirani DSP and the RBH SVTRS system and doing all of the filtering, tri-amplifying my main towers, doing it all in this processor. Because the way that they configured this processor is it has 24 analog channels and 32 digital interface outputs on it. So my goal is to actually have a digital connection between this processor going into the amplifiers of the RBH system and bypassing the entire analog to digital and digital analog conversion process that I was doing in the Mirani DSP. So if all goes well, we're talking about really low noise floor, really state-of-the-art filtering, much better than you could do with analog crossovers. And because there's so many channels built into this processor, I have the ability to do full control of my front three LCRs in the digital domain with all the processing built into this. So before I start talking and geeking out more, why don't we unbox it so you guys can take a look. What's included in the box? We have a USB line extender. And now this has DRAC Live built into it and we're gonna be doing the full calibration for DRAC. It also has the enhanced base management multi subwoofer calibration mode. And this is a brand new technology for DRAC. In fact, we have a calibrated mic. I think this is a separate charge. So this is a mini DSP UM1K microphone. And we'll show you some pictures of this. Now there's no remote control. Let me make this clear. There's no remote control on this processor. This doesn't have a GUI that goes on your on-screen display. A lot of these high-end processors, they don't have that. And what you do is you have web control. So you could control this over the web, or you could also do it over um, a smart device or an iPad. Um, there's a lot more flexibility. I, I kind of like having an on-screen display, to be honest with you. It's going to be getting taken and getting used to but the fact of all the different calibration things you can do over the internet that you can't do on other products I think is really going to be a game changer for what we're trying to set out here okay so let me pull this out So 
So this might not help all the glam of some of the exotic products. I mean, it's a pretty pedestrian looking box. I think it looks okay. But what's inside is what really matters. And what we're gonna be able to do in this new smart home is what really matters. Let me run some of the, uh, run over some of the features for you. So like I said, it has a direct live base control module for multi-sub management. Storm Audio also has what's called expert base management. And it's a multiple base zones def uh, definition and selective base routing. And what I'm understanding with that, and this is gonna be cool, is they have a feature coming. I think it's via upgrade. If you run, what you should do when you do multi-sub is you should run every subwoofer should have LFE content going to it. The idea is you want your subs to have the same signal, especially the really low frequency stuff. That way you take advantage of all the modal distribution by having multi-subs in different locations in the room. But what this product is going to be able to do is you're going to be able to, let's say you have a left subwoofer on one side and a right subwoofer on the other side. You're going to be able to route all the bass for the speakers set small for the left speakers, whether it's the fronts, the surrounds, the sides, all go to that left sub. And then the right speakers, all the bass that's summed is going to go to the right sub. So, I mean, it's debatable whether or not there's um, directionality at bass frequencies below 80 hertz, but we actually did a video about baseness, And I encourage you to check that out. Uh, Matthew and I did all the research on that. And there is some research that points to baseness has advantages. So you don't necessarily hear the stereo effect of bass, but you sense it. So that's another topic for discussion you could check out in that video. But some other cool things about this product, um, the way this is configured right now, this is 24 channel processing with the upgrade path to 32 channels. In my setup, what I'm doing in the AudioHawk Smart Home is we're running a 7.2.6. So we have seven base channels, six in ceiling speakers for height, I'm also pre-wiring for wide channels. So down the road, I could actually make that a 9.2.6. So there's plenty of processing in this product. And then of course I could add additional subwoofers. I'm gonna have the towers, which have two subs in each speaker, plus two additional subs in the back of the room. So technically we're really gonna have two, four, six subwoofers in the AudioHulk Smart Home. This is gonna be able to handle process based manage and do all that stuff. Really excited about that. So even if you don't use D-Rack, another cool thing about this product that you don't get in most of the other uh, processors out there, each channel has a 20 band PEQ. That's incredible granularity. So if you wanna do manual base calibration, after you get your multi-sub properly placed and you get your base levels all set up, then you could go in and like a fine surgeon and go in and knock out some of the base modes or knock out some of the bait, the bumps in your response. You've got 20 band PEQ for every channel. That's incredible processing power. And that's because they have a lot of processes built into this. If you think about this, this is just a glorified computer with an analog preamp attached to it in a chassis. So let me give you a rundown of what's inside of it. Um, I asked Storm Audio and they said they use a high grade, low THD, low SNR, 100, greater than 118 dB, 16 channel DACs from analog devices. It's the ADAU 1966 that offers very low jitter and per they claim perfect clocking to all channels. There are five DSPs in this unit. The one Texas Instruments K2G, it's a one gigahertz beast for the decoding of up to 24 channels now with the possibility of 32 channels in the future. They have four analog device Shark C4, 400 megahertz each processes. Two of them are dedicated just for D-Rack alone. So you know, you're getting the full version of D-Rack with this product. And then the other cool thing is, um, I asked them, are the, are the analog paths in this product differential, true differential, or if it's just a phase splitter for balanced outputs, like most processors? Most processors don't give you a full differential from input to output path. This product is fully differential from the entire DAC all the way to the preamp outputs. Um, the max voltage output is 21 dBU. That's roughly nine volts RMS. That's plenty of gain to drive any amplifier on the market. Storm Audio makes their own amplifier and we're gonna be taking a look at that as well. We're looking at their 16 channel, it's a class D. It's using the same amplifier modules that I'm using inside of my RBH speakers. It's from Pascal, very high end class D. Pascal has an incredibly good power supply, very low noise. 
they chose correctly when they chose a Pascal module in their amplifiers. For channel density and for high output power, it's a great choice. Um, another thing that they talk about that's new in the, in the MK2 that wasn't in the MK1 is they have a new proprietary analog digital hybrid volume adjustment. And in the previous MK1 architecture, the analog output stage was with a constant gain. It was exposing the outputs at full scale permanently with the volume control done and 100% in the digital domain. While this offered a direct path from digital to analog domain, this was, this was at the cost of having an electronics residual noise at a constant level. Whatever the volume adjustment chosen in that older product, um, you could always hear some background noise on really high gain speakers. So reducing the SNR at low level and exhibiting audible background noise with high efficiency speakers was one of their goals with this new one. That's been addressed here. The residuals um, in the noise dropped from 20 microvolts RMS to four microvolts RMS at normal output level adjustment while still maintaining high dynamic range uh, that they were praised for in their first product. So the bottom line is it's almost like they have an active gain control now. So no matter what level you're at, the gain is variable, so the, lo the, lo the noise floor is always optimized, so you're not going to have background noise in this product. And we'll be checking that out. I'm going to be doing a full barrage of, of measurements on the audio precision before I stick this in the rack and we actually do our review. And the other thing that's important is this has Rune, it's Rune ready, so it's Rune uh, integrated. And that's, for those that don't know what Rune is, it's basically a kind of a content management system to consolidate all of your streaming audio or your audio on hard drives into an interface uh, platform. We're going to be taking a look at that. I'm not too familiar with Rune. I know people that use Rune are very highly into it and they speak great things about it. And hopefully I could do a video down the road just on the Rune features. And my goal with this product is I'm going to be supporting it through its life cycle. Storm Audio is a generous, uh, they were generous in actually sponsoring my Audioholic Smart Home. They wanted to be in the theater room. So this is the processor of choice going forward that's gonna be in the AudioHulk Smart Home. I'm gonna be doing a, um, a live interview with the guys at Storm Audio to get more experience with this product, to learn how to do setup. I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys. I'm gonna be doing formal reviews and anytime they have any hardware upgrades down the road, that's something I'd like to be covering. So if you haven't heard of Storm Audio in the past, you're gonna be hearing about them a lot on this channel. This is at the level of processing like you would see with Trinov and some of the other upscale processes. These are all great processes. They all have their pros and cons. My bias towards having a product like this in our house is the flexible base management that it offers. My goal is to have a fully integrated product that could do active speaker management because I want the front three speakers of this showcase home or the smart home to have fully active speaker design, no analog crossovers in the path, and have it all going and managed through the Storm Audio processor, while at the same time having a kick-ass Atmos, DTSX, Oro 3D, IMAX enhanced, you name it, it's gonna have all the processes built in, DTSX Pro is coming. So this is an exciting time. Um, the fact that we're gonna be managing this product over a web interface, it also integrates with our home automation systems. It works with Crestron, it works with Savant. Uh, we're using it with Control 4, so I'm looking forward to see how the driver works on that. And it's just, this is a cool area to get into. This is the high, super high end, but it's also the science end of, of the products. It's getting the best calibrations we can possibly get using D-Rack, using manual setup, and of course, using your ears to make sure you have a really expansive, immersive surround sound effect. We're gonna have plenty of speakers in the house. This product is gonna support much of that with future expandability, which is important. Right now it's HDMI 2.0, but I'm sure down the road it'll be expanded to HDMI 2.1. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be here to stay. I'm looking forward to covering this product. I hope you guys like this video. Please share it. Please thumb it up. Please subscribe to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. Don't forget about our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. I'll be putting a ton of information that's not in the reviews or not on YouTube. I'll be putting it there. So if anybody else has this processor, I could support you there and answer some questions or get you in contact with Storm Audio when it's appropriate. A lot of benefits for being a perk uh, or to be a supporter of our Patreon channel. You help us out. You help us grow this channel. We appreciate it. 
Well, guys, um, why don't you give me some comments down below what kind of processor you're running now and what you're considering in the future and how you're going to upgrade. Appreciate you listening today. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. All right, my friends, I finally opened the box and I just cut my hand on my knife. Great. Over, um, a smart device or an iPad um, is a lot more flexibility. I, I kind of like having an on-screen display, to be honest with you. It's going to be getting taken and getting used to.